Today we connect a Raspberry Pico with the Infineon Hall sensor for rotation measurement. Hey everybody and welcome to the new video. Today it's about a Hall sensor element. You can see here a little display but on the other side you see a Hall sensor. And why that? Because we want to measure the rotation speed of this little machine here. You can apply this method on any application where you want to measure rotation. We will uh, measure time with an interrupt routine when this magnet um, causes a signal on this hall element. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today with our Raspberry Pico. So um, we will use a hall sensor TLE4905. A hall sensor is quite simple. Uh, we use it as a switch. So we will just detect if the magnet is there or not. And if you take a look at the data sheet of the Infineon series, the TLE series, you will find the 4905 and um, three different sensors. And the biggest difference is, and you can see this in the data sheet here, um, on the explanation for the 4905 this is just uh, indicating on Q on the output the on signal while the magnet is there and then it's switching to off when you have another sensor type so the 3545 sensors you need the inverse polarity to switch it back so that's not what we want to use we want to use the simple sensor which just simply unidirectional detects that a magnetic field is there and that it's gone so let's first start with the pinning if you have the sensor you connect the five volts with v this and when this is connected, you need the micro USB to have five volts on this one here, but we will use micro USB for supply. Of course, you need a ground, take any ground you want. That's not important. Let's take this one. And we have an input. And also for the input, it's quite easy. You can use any input you want, any GPIO. We will set this uh, to an interrupt uh, input pin. Uh, so any GPIO will work. Um, for connection. If you want, you can connect a display. You can also use it without a display and then you need a Thony uh, to monitor the rotation speed. I use a display, but refer to my other um, Raspberry introduction for, for display series to see how to connect a display. I don't want to, to deal with this here to have it a bit more simple now. Okay, on my build, I did connect the output to pin 16 and the Raspberry to my PC and we make a first little simple try with Thony, you start Thony and afterwards, yeah, we need some libraries for the first try, maybe we focus on the machine library. So we also don't need all, we need the pin, we need I square C, even not yet, and also timer not yet. Anyway, I will already import these three. Okay, so the, for the first thing, we need to define the hall sensor. And uh, let's call this hall. And we need to take our pin 16 in this case. It's an input, so we define the pin as input. And we take the internal pull-up resistor, so we don't need to uh, connect an external pull-up. All right, and then we can simply check if this is working. Um, first of all, we need an IRQ, so our interrupt for our hall. Uh, we will just define our hall element here above and say if, if the interrupt comes or um, when the interrupt routine shall be triggered, we use the input pin um, and on falling. So our input pin here 16, uh, that's our hall element. If this is triggered by a falling signal, uh, the interrupt routine will be called. Which one? And that's what we need to define now. The routine or function, and we call it hall trigger. And now we, of course, need this function. And this function or the handler, so the IRQ handler for our hall, we need to define it as a normal function, but with a name, which we also uh, defined here at the handler. And we have a handover here, the input, so the source of the interrupt. You see this in a second, because the only thing which we will do here is 
on, on now for now at least is to print the input source and we need a endless loop so our main routine and it will simply wait oh, we didn't import so far the time library let's import the whole time library now we can set a time dot sleep of one second and now we have an endless loop running here which is usually doing nothing just waiting and starting to wait again but the interrupt will of course um, be able yeah to interrupt uh, the routine and print our input when the falling edge is detected on our trigger pin Okay, I start the program and our endless loop and of course we need a magnet and I take uh, these two little new do magnets here and they have of course a polarity north and south and the whole element also needs the right polarity perpendicular to the surface. Let's uh, move the magnet to the hall element and you can see on our output that we get the information that pin 16 did trigger the interrupt. Um, you can see that this is working as an interrupt while our, our loop is still in sleep. And if we rotate the magnet upside down, you will notice that uh, it will not react. So the polarity north-south must be correct to get our hall element uh, switching and giving a falling edge. And now we start the second step and this is a timer interrupt. So we already imported the timer library from machine, which is important because we need this now to define another interrupt. And this is our timer. And we measure time and we use the interrupt routine because it's much more precise than just doing a sleep. And we can't do anything else when we do a sleep. So we use the timer. And we, I call it timer, so that's my name now, and now the timer method or class. Um, we need to define a period. Let's do this as a variable that we can change this. So above here on our um, headlines, we just call this period and define this as 5,000, so 5,000 milliseconds, uh, five seconds. You. Yeah, we come later to this. You can, of course, reduce this, but you might need more magnets on one uh, wheel. We define the timer as a periodic timer. So every periodic timer, every 5,000 milliseconds, the callback routine will be called, which is, yeah, I don't know. Let's call this frequency update or whatsoever. Um, so we need, we need, of course, a routine which is called like our interrupt handler here for our pin, but now based on time. Okay, what I want to change now is that we get a counter which is increasing when the hall element is triggered. So we use the global counter variable here and we simply increase this by one when it's called. That's all. Um, then we define the function for our timer. So we have here our timer, which uh, calls the frequency update function. So we need to define this function. And what shall it do? It's the same like our interrupt routine for the hall, but now based on time, I said this already, we will use our counter variable here and I will introduce a new one, which is also a global variable. So we have to define this on top as well. And this is the rotation. So we need something where we um, have the uh, rotations per minute. Um, in German, it's not a U for the rotations, but anyway. So how is this calculated? That's quite easy. Um, I need to convert this to integer for my display, but this is not important. You can keep this as a float value if you just want to see this in Thondi. I divide the counter by my, the period which I need to divide by 1000 because it's in milliseconds and I want to have this per minute. So I have to get to seconds and multiply this by 60 to get to minutes. So this is just the period in minutes and this is my counter. And that's the simple rotation what I have here. And I set after five seconds the counter back to zero. So the only thing what I do here is I wait five seconds and I calculate the rotations by the ticks I detected. Um, of course, you can reduce your five seconds to one second, to two seconds and so on. 
but it would get less accurate. Um, if you have an unstable system, you might to reduce it, but then you might to increase the number of magnets you place so that you have not only one magnet per rotation, but maybe eight or ten magnets per rotation on a bigger wheel. Okay, to test it, we print our rotations in our while loop, in our main while loop. Um, I will uh, set a comment symbol here for this print so that we just see the print of the rotations. And let's start. And we place a magnet again in front of our Hall element and we just trigger the Hall element several times just to see what happens. Maybe if you are good in a one second period and you should get a 60. Um, but uh, that's just a try if it works in principle and it looks good. So our system works and uh, our rotations uh, principle is already working and ready. Okay, in my final code, I did two further things. I imported also the thread library and for the first time I used the second core which is quite easy in Thony and for the Pico you just simply start the core then you have a simple function which is dealing with the core. And I also used a display and I calculated on this core a circle and uh, another circle which is moving on the circle to visualize rotation. Due to time, I will do this in another video, but I will upload this final code uh, to my GitHub and um, we will yeah, cover the second core and the graphic part in another video. For the rotation, this is already what I did and it worked just to find out if the rotation of my drill press is correct or not. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, it's a lot of effort to create these uh, videos. I had so much more to tell, but the time is over. So um, we did some math to calculate the circle on my display and also the second core. Interesting, however, you know, it's a lot of time I have to spend to create these videos. I like uh, doing these, but I have so many other things to do that it's sometimes very difficult and that's the reason why I can't feed my channel every week with videos, uh, no chance. But I'm always happy if you leave a comment, if you subscribe, if you enjoyed the videos, if you learned something, this is the most important thing. And yeah, see you next time. Maybe one last thing, this machine, yeah, this x uh, 13N, it is incredibly cool. It's from the 70s, it's an old machine, but I really love this. And if you get something like this, an old machine, buy it instead of a new one. It's so much fun. If it's in good shape, um, you can't do anything wrong with it. The quality is insane compared to what is on the market today. It is made forever. See you next time.